Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the um, notice of motion, uh, wheels to wing cycleway. I'm aware that a number of councillors have got questions, so I just wondered if it would be easier if um, staff just gave an overarching um, sort of a, a brief presentation on the process that we've already gone through in relation to this matter and, and where we're up to and, um, you know, potentially any any sort of different ways that we could approach things going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, the process we've undergone to date, I'll go through that quickly and then, we'll, then I can talk about some things maybe we could do to um, mitigate the concerns that have been raised after that. So the process to date uh, in June of last year at the annual plan hearing, there was a, a resolution to staff to bring forward funds to undertake design in consultation of the Wings to Wheels, modal, uh, Wings to Wheels Cycleway. So it said bring forward $500,000 of capex from FY26 to FY21 to design for design and consultation of the Wings to Wheels major cycle route with the intention of enabling the commencement of construction of the intersection of Breen's Gardeners and Hewood in financial year 22 as part of the cycleway. Staff undertook, um, following that, staff uh, got their skates on and developed up the scheme design, de developed up a scheme design. That um, proposal for a scheme design was presented to the Joint Community Boards in November of last year and as, as a briefing and uh, there was feedback and that feedback was responded to and, um, and uh, via a technical note and um, Sorry, and the staff then briefed the Urban Development and Transport Committee on the same route. At the same, at both the same briefings, the Norwest Arc Cycleway was presented as well, and um, the feedback from the boards was discussed with the Urban Development Committee, and the uh, memo was circulated. Following that, consultation material was um, finalised and this was the 17th of December. Uh, staff consultation started in late January, needed to in order to allow for the possibility of a hearing before the LTP, which by the end of April we're starting to get cut out of time for that. So they were working hard to try and um, achieve a um, a hearing prior to uh, the LTP so that we could commence construction in FY22. Um, so uh, we went out, uh, the staff went out and talked to a number of the businesses prior to the leaflet drop for the consultation. It was only a week prior, but this was sort of the first working week post Christmas. So they did get out and um, talk to as many as they could and have arranged meetings with key stakeholders along the route. Uh, there have been two drop-in sessions, as was raised by um, the chairman from Fendleton Waimari. Both have been held currently in the, at the Bishdale Community Centre. They have been extremely well attended. Um, and to date, uh, at 9 o'clock yesterday morning, we had in excess of 500, I think it was close to 550 submissions already and we still have four weeks of the consultation period to run, and another drop-in session. So the two drop-in sessions we've had, we've had, uh, the, our estimate is between 150 and 180 at the first one, and in excess of 100 at the second one. There's been extensive discussion, there's been a large number of staff at each of them, extensive discussion with everybody that's come in, talking through their concerns, their issues, their understanding, and there's been a very very good and very positive conversation. We are having a conversation with the community about this cycleway and it's been, it's great that we are. Thank you. Uh, Sarah. Oh, Thank you. I did, sorry, I did say I'd talk about going forward. Yes, please. <laughs> I just I got reminded. I'd, I'd so we, we have done one thing to mitigate this already um, in that 
um, following the committee, the um, closing date for consultation has been extended by two weeks. So it now closes on the 8th of March. It was originally closing late February. Um, going forward, there's a number of things we could do. We, we could extend it further. Um, we could have another drop-in session. Um, but the staff, um, we have given the amount of feedback we've already had, we have had to go away from trying to have a hearing prior to the LTP. So we are now after the LTP before we will get to a hearing, which is August, September, um, looking for a hearing. So there was quite a bit of time in that for us to be able to work with the community boards and with the affected stakeholders down there so that they are clear and understand the design before we put, before staff put a recommendation to a hearings panel for a final design. So we can, it gives us time to analyse all the feedback we get, understand those concerns and look at what can and can't be done to mitigate it. So, because we do have to look at it from a technical and a safety perspective as well. So um, I anticipate there will be a number of meetings with community boards, a number of meetings with stakeholders. Uh, there'll be, we could have a workshop, we could have, we will have briefings before we um, finalise our hearings report. And the staff will be looking to incorporate the feedback from the boards from those briefings before they finalise the hearings report so that it's very clear what the board's feedback is, what's been done or hasn't been done in relation to that, and that, that we do that faithfully and um, factually. Uh, so that's I've sat in on um, a, a meeting with one of the... Um, members of the community uh, with you, Linny, and I, I got the impression that, uh, that, that there isn't, a, that, that, that there will be changes to the design as we yeah. go through the process. Yes, there will be. Um, and given the feedback, all of the cycleways have had some form of change throughout them following consultation. Some have been extreme and some have been minor tweaks along the way. It, it, it all started with the Papanui parallel and um, we we did extra consultation, but it could have been um, not taking out a tree that the community, that was earmarked to be taken out, that the community raised concerns over us taking out, the design was tweaked and we didn't take it out. So it could be from that level through to actually changing the facility type like we did when we um, worked with the community to find a solution along Ferry Road. So it, there's both ends of that we worked. So there's different levels of change. Yes. And um, is our process fixed on a hearings panel at the end of it, or is there an alternative process that we could agree to as a council? I'll have to divert to my learned colleague yeah, on I the mean, other I, side I of Richard I don't know the question. answer to the question. I'm a, I'm, I'm a trained lawyer, and you always train to uh, never ask a question that you don't know an answer to in public, but um, I'd like to know the answer to the question. The uh, uh, the, the, the answer is yes. The uh, the, the answer is the, uh, the hearings panel could be expanded. The, uh, uh, the hearings panel could I'm be a saying, committee. Does the hearings panel, do we have to use a hearings panel in this process, is that something that we've already resolved to do? I think I'd just like to get a little bit of advice on that and I can answer okay. your question. Oh, then you don't have to answer it right yeah. now, but yeah. if, if you could get that, please. Sarah. Thanks so much. A um, couple of questions. Um, there's been, there was the joint board briefing um, and then some additional feedback from one of the boards. Um, I looked at the briefing presentation and consultation was covered as well as the design stuff. And I can see that questions were raised over the design. Were any questions raised over the consultation at the joint board briefing? The consultation process? The consultation process? Yeah. No, not to my knowledge. No. And were any queries or concerns about the consultation process raised um, at the um, committee briefing? No. No. Okay. And subsequent to the um, the joint board briefing, when you got more feedback from the Fiendal Jumai Murray Hewood board, was that over consultation, over a design? Um, the additional two questions that were raised, I've got them written here. Just bear with me a second. And I've lost them on my piece of paper. I only have two. 
Um, what mitigation was proposed in relation to parking outside Copenhagen Bakery? Yeah. And uh, how can a cycle lane, it was broadly, how, how can we achieve a cycle lane along the median of Herewood Road? Okay. So it was a design question around the placement of it. It was, um, there was discussion and as um, uh, Community Board Member Cartwright said this morning, um, there was discussion around cost. Yeah. So it was about, yeah. about thinking, cost can we do design. it? Can we do it more efficiently? And yeah, yeah there okay. was a discussion. No, that's really good. So it was good. But um, at any stage, um, before sort of I guess a week ago, had anyone raised concerns about the consultation process with staff? No, we had had no queries. Thank through. you. And when it does come to cost, um, how much have we spent so far? On since council passed the resolution to get us to this point. Since council passed the resolution. Yeah, on this particular joining these up and getting it ready. Uh, we've been working on and off on wings to wheels for a number of years. Okay. Okay. So on wings to wheels, then the route section design. Route section start again, design. The stop start and that the we've consultations had, over. We. Printing. Printing, all of this consultation material, we're cranking up close to a million dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, Yanni? Uh, thank you. Can, can you just help me understand where the process for the cycleways, um, both engagement and consultation and decision making, is identified? Because I'm just trying to understand like, what's the normal process that we would use for consultation and engagement and communications on a cycleway? especially around decision making they so that one of the questions so, raised this morning was we should be doing a special consultative procedure i've read through the significance and engagement policy and it would seem you know major impact so i'm just trying to understand how we what what the kind of level of um transparency is around the process we'll use around our cycleways in terms of engagement and consultation and also decision making the process we've engaged, or the process we've undertaken through this cycleway is no different to the process we've undertaken on every other cycleway. And is from a consultation perspective, the difference is we started at a point where we had a resolution from the annual plan, which we, which is different to other projects. That said, the process we've undertaken from that point is the same as we've undertaken on every other cycleway, and is broadly the same as every other transport project that we do. But, so the idea to have a hearing, um, like because you know, that's not something we've done for previous cycleways? Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Wh which ones? All of them. So they've all gone. So, so like Ferry the Road, was there a hearing panel for that? So can I pass that? I'll pass that one on to um, John. In a second. Okay. However, can I just finish the rest of the other one? Yeah, yeah, the you. process is the same as we've done for every other process. You also talked about the decision making um, process for major cycle routes. The decision making process for major cycle routes is defined in the delegations register and major cycle program is designated a metropolitan project and the decision making sits with the urban development committee. Yeah, and there is a requirement to brief the community boards, and yes, that's what we changed is, in the last that... election. Um, so, yeah. So there is a requirement to brief the community boards prior and gather their feedback, and that's what we're doing and in this process. Yeah, and and to clarify, that's uh, in the the delegations uh, register, for the uh, and it's part of the uh, delegations to the the UDAT terms committee. Sorry, the terms of reference <coughs> to the UDAT committee. Okay. And the hearings? So the, the hearings. So in the uh, previous council, when we had uh, the, the previous uh, committee structure, which was the ITI committee, they had full delegation over the cycleways. We treated them as if they were a hearing. So um, they, they generally, I think apart from one instance that I can recall, they, have, they had their own meeting, so a, a separate meeting, um, with hearings, so for purposes it was the same process, a hearings process, it was just the ITI committee was sitting as the hearings panel and making, and then they had the delegations to make the decision. 
right. but we don't have that committee structure anymore. We have a different committee structure. So, so why wouldn't we do a special consultative procedure on this, given its significance? Oh, can uh, we just pause for two seconds before we answer that? I can answer that. Yeah. Um, so, um, in, in terms of significance, these are, are both um, a high significance uh, consultation, and uh, we have uh, consulted in, in a matter in accordance with that. So, everything we've done, you would expect to see if it was a high significance. They're not. A, we're not aware of any statutory obligation to do a special consultative procedure, but just pointing out the difference in what we have done in the special consultative procedure are very, very small. We have. Um, provided access to relevant information, we have encouraged people to present their views, we've held, held drop-ins, and um, it's worth noting that we're probably we're out longer than we would be if it were a special consultative procedure. There is no statutory or there's no legislative requirement for it to be a special consultative procedure. We provided this advice back to uh, David Lynch this morning as well. Okay. Um, so and, sorry, can I add to that? If it, if it, even if it was an SCP, the minimum is to be open for at least a month, which we are, and then we would treat it um, as if we had to have hearings, which is what we're doing. The only so, difference is a public notice. Yeah. So in technical terms, there's actually not much difference. In fact, it's almost identical. Almost to what identical. We, we do. So, um, and just, uh, I guess, um, just having experience with Ferry Road, where we've seen a similar issue where a huge amount of concern is raised at, at, during a process mm -hmm. and then we have to go and redesign it significantly and then we, I guess we have obligations to go back out with revised plans if they change you know to a certain degree so it seems like for this one that's certainly going to be the case how are we factoring in um, going back out to the community with a revised plans and what's the possibility for the community board to be briefed on that plan before it goes back up for consultation so that they could um, have their views expressed? So as I talked to you before we started the questions, um, we are anticipating having a number of conversations with the community board and they will be briefed before we finalise our hearings report. So we will be going back to the community board with what the changes are as yet, we haven't quite figured out how we will do that with the community, but it will be done as a very minimum. Every person that can that responds will get um, access to the updated plans, and we will we will be providing them with access to the updated plans to show them what those changes are and how we've taken into account their. Sorry, I, was, I think I'm kind of not being quite understood. It seems really obvious from the feedback we've had already that the current design will have to significantly be changed based on the feedback. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. This is about the process that we've undertaken. Okay. The designs, there will be changes to the design through this process and we can communicate that. But what I'm level? not determining, we can't predetermine before we start this or at this meeting what level that will be. We will have to make a call as to whether we will have to reconsult or we have to go back out. But that's... That's, that's part of this process in between. That, you, you can go back out for further consultation yeah. if yeah. you felt that we there felt was such a significant change that there yeah. would be warranted. That, that's exactly right, but I, but I don't know... Particularly if you were going to affect people who you didn't think were affected perhaps by the initial route. So say yeah. you were making a change that was so significant, and this is common across all kind of things that we do, it's including district plan and everything else. If you made a change which which um, resulted in different people being affected to those who yeah. were originally, or you might want point. to reconsult. But I think it's too early for us, as Lynette said, to predetermine whether that's going to be the case. Are you able to give us a sense of the over 500 submissions to date? No. Yeah, no so, one's looked no, at them. No, we haven't. We've had two weeks. We've been open for two weeks. Okay. We've had a run through them. We know there's 500, yeah. but I don't know what the feedback is. What about is. the feedback from the community meetings? The Yanni, Yanni, they're drop-in centre sessions for yeah. information. So uh, the thing is, is that I mean, I can see I'll, the I'll questioning. I was just trying to find heading. a way forward because it seems I think to me... your questioning's not being helpful okay. in terms of the discussion today. We're, we're, we're trying to find a way forward. Um, I know that there's been a lot of publicity around it, and you know I've personally been to see a couple of the affected businesses. I know, I know the challenges in relation to that street. I lived in Papua Nui. I grew up in that area. I know it really well, and 
solutions are, you know, problem solving is actually what the focus has got to be. But what I'm hearing from staff is that this isn't the be all and end all, it's a starter for 10. Um, I mean, a significant amount of work's gone into developing a starter for 10, but essentially they are now in listening mode and working with the stakeholders in the community mode. Um, there can't have been an assessment done of 540 submissions in the two weeks that they've started to come in. If it's helpful to the council, there have been very in-depth and very detailed discussions with the community. We've had a lot of staff involved in these drop-in sessions. They've been great discussions that have, they've, yes, they have got heated at times, but they are a good discussion about the Bishopdale and Hewood communities. Mm. in Papua Noi communities. And importantly, uh, Councillor, as well, we have four more weeks to go, and I have no doubt there Another will be problem. a significant number of more people who will be bringing their ideas forward and their comments. So it would be wrong for staff to predetermine that at this stage. But just in terms of, I guess what I was trying to understand is who would make the decision that the plans should be revised and go out? If, if we're having a hearing, we don't know who's on that panel. Is the suggestion that it comes back to the Transport Committee? Well, at this stage, as I understood it, staff have said that the, the matter will go back to um, both of the community boards. And I guess my question on top of that would be, is that able to be done in an open workshop sort of environment mm -hmm. so that the public can see yep. what the community board's being briefed on and, 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 and take that into account? Mm, yes. yes. And I think the important thing to note is even when the consultation closes, that, that doesn't mean that the conversations stop with no, affected absolutely. parties, yep. including elected representatives. So we take on board all the feedback, but there's a number of people who we continue the conversation on with. And that's been the way we work all our transport projects, it's not unique to this, it's simply just what we do. <coughs> but a hearings process is quite different, there so is that's a, what's there confusing There are particularly about key stakeholders down the Hereward Road route, and it seems to me that we've got until now at least August mm, yes. before mm. even a consideration is given to setting up a hearings panel. So, I mean, in a way, that's, that, 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 that's the comfort that I've been seeking in this regard, is just a, a, an understanding that there is... There are many steps to go before anyone needs to, um, you know, consider anything as uh, as in a position to go forward. Because at this stage, we haven't got a plan that's in a position to go go forward. That's correct. But um, I, I have Jimmy, and then I've got um, Tim. Thank you, Matt. Two questions. First one: uh, unique potential parcel. Up to now, uh, at time the two times. Uh, Still one time to go. The other one received uh, 550 the, uh, submissions already. But regarding to the intense, the existing consultation process of increased community awareness and also increased engagement with the affected community. During the next uh, four weeks, the staff had any the kind of uh, practical methodology to improve, encourage more the submission and feedback to the council for the next uh, four weeks. So what we, what we are doing for the next four weeks is yes. um, is meeting with key stakeholders, including many of the schools. I know that staff are meeting with Hewitt School in the next few days. We're looking to meet Papanui High. We're talking to Cotswold. There's Emmanuel Christian Brains. School, Breen's Intermediate. There's also Burnside Primary. So there's a number of schools along that route. We're also looking to talk and continue to talk, and we will after it is closed, to all of the, all of the businesses, but more conversations with some of the significant businesses down there, like the Charity Hospital, the um, aged care centres, the mall. So there's a number of... There's a lot of work that we're continuing to do, as well as having the public drop-in sessions and the public feedback coming in. Okay. But, Jimmy, yeah. I'd also add that uh, uh, should it be necessary, we can uh, organise uh, further drop-in sessions yes. uh, along the route 
and uh, our community development support staff are able to work with uh, transport unit and consultation to make sure that happens and to make sure that uh, those opportunities are very, very well uh, promoted within the community to capture uh, uh, people who might otherwise have missed it. So we, we can respond quickly. Okay, thank you. Second question. Okay. Uh, the I'm concerned that, uh, what is the legal advice or legal challenge to the council if assumption, you know, if this uh, notice motion were approved by the council today? No, but we did I'm have. Sorry, it's, hmm? you, you can't ask to have legal ask, advice. Okay, right. I just want to it, you know, pass on the challenge table. or not. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I, I do want us to. Um, okay. Just take our time and just deal with this as, as we best can. Okay. Tim. Thank you. And a nice, simple question, and it may usually be for the move in a second, I'm not quite sure, but why only the west side of Gret from Greers Road? Why, I mean, it seems a quarter of it's not mentioned, so why is that, do you know? That's something for the move in a second, sorry. Thank you. Cool. Cheers. Um, well, we'll find out. Sam. <laughs> Just a quick one. Um, so we talked about the, the community board briefing and then the transport, the UDAP briefing. Yeah. So after the feedback from the community board briefing, what changes were made to the design before it went to UDAP? I don't believe there were any because they had been addressed from the briefing. They didn't, well, they, the staff did not, so this, the technical recommendation was to not have a central median. Um, is that correct? Yeah, so we did go to all elected members and there was a discussion about the questions that were raised. Okay, so, there, yeah, so just to be clear, there were no changes after we didn't the change briefing it, no. that the community board had. No. Okay, so then the... the we did explain what we'd done around the mitigation for Copenhagen Bakery. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, and then that, what like Leanne was talking about before with the community board when it comes back, would that again be another briefing or would there be a decision-making element to that for the community boards? No, there will be no decision-making element. The decision-making is sits with the Urban Development Committee, but I imagine there will be... Uh, we can work through the details, but I imagine there will be a workshop to understand the feedback, so it is actually a to and fro, mm. but staff, I believe staff need to take the feedback that they get, whether it be a briefing, a workshop, or whatever those discussions are with the community board, and faithfully repeat them in their report and say these are the concerns and otherwise that have come through from the committee, uh, the community board, sorry, and this is how we're addressing it. Or this is why we can't, but we should have done that. There should be no surprises in that report. There will be no surprises in that report for, from the community board. Right. Okay. In, sorry, in, in addition, uh, Sam, the, uh, I'd be highly surprised if the community board's concerned don't make a submission and uh, you know, by doing that, it's a very good avenue for them to be uh, uh, to be formally heard and considered in whatever forum or forums eventuate from that. No, no, that's fine. I just yep. wanted to clarify whether our feedback had changed any designs, and it hasn't. So that's that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just I'm I, I haven't got a copy of the attachment. You know that that explains why the central medium strip um, wasn't wasn't possible, but. Um, that, I mean, it, that's neither here nor there. It's, um, it's. I mean, it, it's obviously. It was a very technical um, response. That, that, a technical that, that, note that was I've, attached to a memo. I feel, but I, yeah. which, which is unfortunate because I mean, it is, it is something that people have kind of looked at as, as whether it's, um, whether it's possible and whether there are alternative mechanisms that could allow for that to happen. So, but. You wouldn't be saying that that it's completely out of the way, no. Okay, so all right, um, Mike and then Aaron. Uh, actually, it's, it's following on from Tim's question, um, but it's for for staff. Um, obviously, they're looking to stop the cycleway consultation at one point along an entire route. What would that actually impact? Would that have on the total cycleway? Like, could you continue with just a small smaller section down the other end, or so it would no, I, effectively it, it does stop the con whole have consultation? An impact on all of it. it, it the, the resolution will stop all the consultations. 
And and obviously, from what I can see, the reason why it's Greers Road West is because that's where the Heward Ward starts. That's the boundary. Yeah. Ward boundary. Yes. So yeah, the rest is actually in the Papanui Ward. Okay. Uh, the other question. So stopping this cycleway um, and then going through this type of process. Do you have any ideas of what type of delay that could cause to this project? It's a bit, uh, of, a, it's a bit of a step in the dark. Probably six to 12 months. But but in terms of us, uncertainty is, is the real... Um, for us delivering our capital programme and getting projects underway, um, stopping and starting has quite a significant impact on time and cost. Yeah. And, and I guess... Other cycleway projects, um, the, the standard that has been done is it's designed by technical experts, obviously taking into account a lot of factors. Um, once that's done, it then um, goes out for consultation to the with the community. Yes. That's okay. Yes. We've never done it differently for a cycleway. It's always been designed then consult. Yes. Thank you. Aaron. Yeah, got a um, couple of questions here. The first one is, at the drop-in sessions, do we do an exit poll, um, which is a follow-on from kind of Yanni and Jimmy's point over the flavour. I realise that we, uh, not everyone has seen the return slips coming through, but at the drop-in sessions, do we do an exit poll to see whether the session has met their expectations? Like they got, because I was getting feedback outside, it took me 30 minutes to get inside the first one. Um, and it was a pretty clear feedback, but do we do that? No, no, we don't do an exit poll. Unfortunately, the first drop-in was uh, wrongly communicated on radio, I believe, as a public meeting rather than a drop-in. So people's expectations coming along to that were that there was going to be some sort of presentation in a public meeting. It was on all of our collateral that we distributed and the way we promoted it very clearly a drop-in mm. with people invited to drop in any time between set times. We didn't conduct an exit survey at that point, but I imagine people had turned up expecting a public meeting. Yeah, I got the same feedback from people. We had never promoted it as a public meeting. It was always promoted as a drop-in. Yeah, so the, the people coming out seemed to be, um, uh, the flavour was that uh, that it wasn't what they were expecting to go to. Not just that, but just the whole way that we communicate as a council with them. Um, so we, we we've that? done a number of drop-in sessions and, and, we, and, and we have done a huge amount of consultation on transport projects over the years. And uh, one recently in the same neighbourhood and with a recent sort of flavour of um, community engagement in that conversation. And we are very concerned that everybody has a chance to ask questions of staff and understand the detail of why we think, why we have put this proposal forward. As a, so this proposal that has gone forward on a piece of paper to go out to co public consultation is a technical piece, is a piece of technical advice to say technically this is how we can design this, this is addressing the safety issues you raised, the objectives of the project and, and, and the guidelines that we've got to design to that members of the public don't necessarily understand um, and don't always make sense to me sometimes, but that's what that's the way it is, and we, we put that there. We're very concerned that everybody that comes through the door and has a question to ask of us gets an answer to that question, a respectful mm. and detailed answer to that question in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that they can understand it, and if they don't understand it, that we stay with them until they, they, they've had a chance to work through those concerns that they've had and understand them. This is not about us trying to change anyone's mind. This is just about us trying to provide as much information as we can mm. and everyone has a chance. And we have very much found that it doesn't happen in public meetings. Right. Drop-in sessions like this with a lot of staff around the table, and we had a lot of staff there, including both of us, uh, all of us at this table, um, and a lot of technical staff there, and a lot of non-technical staff that can explain the why we're doing this, what are we looking to do, how are we trying to achieve this, what's the process we're going through. So there was people there to talk to all of that, and we 
we chopped and changed around the room as people needed their questions answered and that's what we did. And yes, it was a two hour window. I was there for two and a half talking to people even on the longer. second one, or even longer. The first one went for longer as well. Um, the, the, worst, the, the hardest part about the first meeting was the expectation of a public meeting and that wasn't met with some people. Other than that, when we started talking about the detail of it, you, you work through it all. Can I, can I just uh, intervene? Because I, I, I spoke to somebody who attended that believing that they were attending a public meeting mm. and when they realised what it was and saw what was happening, they actually felt so disquieted by it that they left so they didn't engage with that one. They're going to one of the other ones. Um, and I, I think sometimes when people's expectations about what they're going to are changed, I remember this after the earthquakes, there were some meetings which were public meetings mm. and they were great because some people who'd be nervous of asking a question, somebody else would ask the question and they'd hear the answer. But I found at public meetings that you could say the same thing to a room full of 500 people and have four different versions of what they were told mm. because people were hyped up and, 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 and angry or fearful or whatever. So in this situation, having an information drop-in centre where people can get their ideas, understand what's being proposed, and begin a discussion about the concerns that they have, well, then that's a good thing. Mm. So, um, you know, I do, I feel sorry for staff who've gone down a particular um, process. I want to see how we can write the process um, so that we can continue to engage with the key stakeholders about the design changes that need to be made. Because there's clearly some that do need to be made to be taking into account some of the concerns that have been raised. So it wasn't a public meeting. People's expectations had been raised mm. so that they believed they had to turn up to a public meeting to demand that changes be made. And that's not the process. Yeah, and I 100% agree with you there and do feel for the staff that were there, especially the first one, because um, I copped a fair amount of abuse myself. Um, and it took quite a bit of time to get in. Um, people thought I'd voted for it, so one guy was about to clock me. Um, and uh, and if you didn't grow up on my side of town, that's hitting someone. Um, and so it was a very, very Did heightened grow up emotions. On your side of town, and but I know exactly what it means. The, um, the, the, so then, as an organisation, are we not looking at the process we go through with the cycleways because we get so much pushback when several years ago they were overwhelmingly asked for? And uh, as part of Share an Idea, they were one of the highlights. And so, but we now end up in a situation where it gets very combative between the public and the council as an organisation, and then the staff cop it. Yeah, uh, it, it doesn't need to be like that. I feel like that the, the community is kind of the meat and the sandwich of all of this, and we just need to take the temperature down, and we need to ensure that staff can continue to engage with people. You know, and 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 that way we can come back um, looking at what the what the result of that process is. So, uh, I mean, that, that, that's my desire, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that um, out of today we can achieve that. So, okay. my other but, but you had another question. I've got more. Just a reflection, if you yep. don't mind, in com in, into this conversation. I think the other point is uh, people will come up with a concept of an idea and share an idea where we say we want to have a greener city, we want to be a place that's more active, etc and people would sign up to that principle. The reality becomes real when it's in your street, outside of your front door, and then people sometimes think about it differently than what they may have thought of in a principle terms. So, and, and the strength of the conversations that staff are having directly with the public, with businesses, with voluntary sector bodies, etc., is the strength of actually that engagement. And I applaud them for that because they are front and centre, right in people's, people are in their faces. And they're not backing away from that, they're listening. And absolutely, this organisation, in the decision-making process, whatever scheme it is, if it can be technically accommodated, if it meets the safety standards, and it meets all the things we're supposed to do as an organisation, then the staff amend the plans accordingly in light of that consultation. And I don't want you going out of here thinking that doesn't happen because it does. 
Uh, Aaron. Yeah, so um, my next one is around, um, because there's been a lot of feedback, um, I don't know what's in the, in, the, in the bin so far, but to me directly, around the removal of the traffic lane that we're taking out an entire lane. So my question is, is there, what other roads which were major arterials, and I know this has recently had the designation changed to minor arterial, but it still has more traffic than its neighbouring major arterials, of 13,500 vehicles, which other roads have had an entire lane um, pulled out that have carried that much traffic? Uh, that, oh, I mean, is there this, any in New Zealand? Query, sorry, this, the, the conversation today is about the process around the consultation, not the design of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know we've brought up that, you know, the community board raised some design features. I understand what some of the concerns have been raised have been at the drop in sessions. But I came prepared to talk about the process. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think the question takes us into a into a, an area that we're not focused on today. We're not focused on no, no, no. We're not focused on the design of the of the cycleway. Otherwise, we'd be asking questions well, about we'd go straight the, to the, notice the median 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 option. Um, what we're asking about is about the process going forward. So, um, and and whether there is a process going forward, or whether it, there's a commitment to one. That that that's that's really what today is about. Um, Sarah, you had a question. Uh, sorry, it had started. To, my question was going to stray a little bit into the the design stuff. So I'll Rather probably avoid that, that one. No questions designed yeah, that's into, right. this, um, into the so design. Is it possible under the process, so I'm trying to understand a little bit more about what's expected from the notice of motion if it did pass. So is it okay to ask the mover a couple no, of questions I, look, or not? Because I'm, 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 I'm yeah. going to, once we've got all the technical questions yep. out of the way for staff, I'm going to have a brief adjournment because I want to understand the answer to One that question, question myself yep. okay. um, before we enter into the yep. into the One debate. Staff, then. So um, we've talked so far about the consultation for cycleways and this being the same as the other ones. It's my understanding that this isn't just the same process that we use for cycleways, it's for every transport project, roading, the whole lot. Is that right? But every bro transport project? Is yep. So, yep. Thanks. Right. Are there any other questions for staff? Melanie and Mike. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Melanie, Mike, Phil and Aaron. Okay, I've got three questions, one of them being long. Um, the first one is, is that um, this morning um, David Cartwright presented and he said that um, he'd like the community board to be involved during the consultation process. So what you've talked about is... Um, you know, the after and the workshops and things like that. Is there a way to have them involved within this next four weeks? The community, the community board could submit on it and that would give them uh, kind of into the process, but, but that formality might not be what's best. In terms of sitting down post the process, we said, you know, we'd certainly do that, and that could take many forms, whether it's a briefing workshop or, or something else. Um, we're open to further meetings with community boards, whether it's before or after the end of the process. I'm not yes. seeing anything, which is problematic for us, because we are continuing that conversation with all the other st key stakeholders as we go through, whether that's before the end of the consultation or after. In the community board, all of the community board members and councillors, local councillors are all aware of the drop-in sessions and are able to attend. It's not, it's the same, there are information sessions there for anyone to come along and, and talk to, but and it's about us getting feedback mm -hmm. and having those conversations about what the concerns are. Having the, if, we, if we can have them together with that community, that's great. So the community board can be as involved as they want to during this period. Yep. Um, so the second one is just to, um, I just want to make sure I've got all this process in my head. So there's a consultation period at the moment. You're talking with businesses, you're meeting with key stakeholders, including all the schools. You're prepared to talk to anyone who wants to submit or anyone who just comes along to talk about it at a drop-in. prepared to have additional drop-in sessions um, as well. Yes. So then the submissions are received and it, and, and it closes. And then after that period, 
there's the discussions still continue. So it continues with the stakeholders and businesses, as you talked about. Um, it's, you're talking about bringing it to open workshops, discussions, briefings with the community board where public could come along. Um, then all that feedback over a few months will be um, fed into a detailed design. And then at this stage, it's thought that it's going to go to a hearings process, which could be the full um, UDAP committee. And then um, all the feedback will be outlined and the staff rationale will be given. And then when it's in the hearing, the submitters can then also speak to the hearing. Yes. Um, including the community boards if they choose to submit, which they will. So is that correct so far? That is correct so far. The only bit missing out of the year is prior to us finalising and submitting that hearings report, we will be briefing both the community boards and the Urban Development Committee. So that they know what's going into that report or if we have to, we amend it before it gets done, before that hearings panel gets done. So there's, a, there's an opportunity to have a final conversation at that process so that we can have that conversation before we finalise our report, our, our recommendation to the hearings panel. And remembering then the hearings panel can either accept or the officer's advice, mm. reject it or amend it. Right. Yes. Okay. No, that's cool. That, that's that. And then my third question was, um, is it true that on um, July 23rd, 2020, when we had a meeting um, for the annual plan, there was a resolution to bring forward the $500,000, yeah, all plan of that stuff? It speaks for itself. Yeah, yep. but that it was moved by Councillor Davidson. Yes, it's, and we Councillor all Keogh. know what the record says. I know, says. I'm just asking. No, the council staff do not need to go and look up it's, the The whole point was who seconds it. <laughs> it will be, we, we know who moved and seconded the motion. It's just a matter of fact. So it doesn't require a comment from staff. Thank you. Mike. Oh, thank you. Um, Sounds like it's going to be actually a really good process. That's great. One of the questions I have is there was a, um, a flyer uh, distributed about the consultation from the... Um, Council staff didn't distribute I, the flyer. No, 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 I, please I, I, not engage staff in a conversation no, 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 There's, a, there's a just a very important question because obviously this no, is about I'm the sorry, consultation. I'm sorry, I'm ruling it out of order. If you are referring to a flyer that one of your council colleagues distributed to two of the question. community board members, well, I do know the, the flyer that you're talking about. I don't want staff to be asked a question on it. Can you... All right, I'm just not going to accept it. I'm sorry. Um, Phil. Yep, um... What, this was supposed to be done in 2026, is that correct? Yes. Has it not helped you at all that some of us or all of us dragged it forward and made you jump into this consultation process a bit earlier or in a shorter time frame than what you would have liked to? Like the, Christmas, the only, Christmas hasn't helped the situation. Well, the only, the only fact in the, in, the, in the matter is that it is a shorter time frame than we would normally have and Christmas didn't help it. Okay, and the other the other question, um, we said we'd give you five hundred grand to go and do it, but we, you said we spent a mill. Is that over previous years? Yes. And in so the there long was money run, money spent to develop the route, to do all the assessments before that, and that was done in twenty eighteen. Okay. And then annual subsequent long term plans and annual plans shifted, but um, program proge, programs and projects around. And, and very roughly, I won't hold you to it. What 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 will the design cost in the long run? Oh. Roughly, if we have to go back and already. redesign it, it'll cost a lot more. But you know, okay. But with with people um, submitting and doing things, there's an outside chance that there will be some design change. Yes, there'll, there'll be design. No, there'll, no. There's a there's a very rare. The, it, it's not a, a probably the wrong place to say. It. It's not up for debate as to whether there's going to be change. There is going to be change. We've we've had feedback from submitters that have, uh, let's just talk to the charity hospital, who have concerns about how they can get their vehicles in and out. There are changes to the design, very, very easy, minimal changes that we can make that make the world work just so much easier for them and their vehicles and their deliveries and their and their patients and and the people that have to use that space. Okay, thank you. There will be changes. Thank you. Um, I've got uh, Aaron. <coughs> So, just. Um, got a question as well. 
No. Cheers, Mike. <laughs> and I was I would have been happy to answer your just, question. I was as well. just being advised that Anne has a question. I didn't I couldn't oh. tell, so I'm going to come. I do want to go to Anne first. After you, Aaron. Okay. Um, Such a gentleman. So, is it correct that we've spent a ballpark a million dollars so far? That's what I said before. So yes. then, why weren't we told that at the start of this when? Uh, the reason we're here is because the people of one area overwhelmingly wanted a set of traffic lights, which that's the cost. We haven't put a shovel in the ground yet. We could have had the traffic lights. And kids will be walking to school this year. It brings intermediate. Cotswold. We're, we're working to the council resolution, which asked us to bring forward funding for design and consultation of the wheels to wing cycleway. So... If you support the the Greens here would intersection. Yeah, could yeah be I realise that as part because of, of the that project, game so. playing at this table, we have to juggle things around a little to get to an end result. Twenty million dollars later, when a million would have sufficed, well, that makes sense. Bit, bit Thank you. Okay, and um, Anne's question, I'll get Dawn to read it out. Right. Um, can you speak? I'll try. Does that work? Yeah. No. no. Yeah, you can hear me. Great. Yeah. I wondered, great, thank you. I wondered if uh, the delays in, the, in, in, in pushing out cons consultation in the process is going to put uh, the funding from Waka Kotahi for the traffic lights at risk in any way. Can I, can I say, will, will a delay in the process put funding from Waka Kotahi or the, yes, the, or the traffic lights at risk. For the traffic lights, I would lights imagine the answer is no. But um. the, the delay, any delay in the process, doesn't change the funding profile for um, the project. Yeah, just delays yeah. the process. Yeah. So the answer is no. No. So, uh, oh, Mike. Thank and you, Yanni. If. Um, I'm just curious. So, if this was to go back and get redesigned to a sta to a standard that um, obviously was a lot less than what we're currently saying, so say cycle lanes, is there a risk though that it may not um, receive the the subsidy because of the cost benefit ratio not being high enough? Um, I, I wouldn't have thought so, but potentially there's always a possibility, but. Yeah. Um, and, no, thank you. And I, I guess when we're talking about the cost so far to date, when was this? What year was the decision to have a, a cycleway uh, in this area done? Um, community. Uh, so my understanding is the strategic case. Part of the cost would have gone against us. Was um, reported to council 2013, 2014. Yeah. Um, and we briefed community boards, uh, both community boards and the ITE committee in 2018 on the corridor and the route selection for this route. It's been a number of, number of years, yes. some of the work. Uh, lastly, are the majority of car parks proposed to go in Heward Road? Uh, no. No. That, no. Sorry. no. Thank you. Um, at Yanni? Yeah. Um just wanted to check in terms of going out for consultation with options. Are there options in the consultation document? And if not, why not? Um, that was a conversation that was had with the committee when we briefed them, because there were there are options for different styles of design down there, and the guidance from the board was uh, from the committee was to um, go out with what we've got. Um, Therefore. Right, and so basically, was so there's been no change from either from the committee or the board from the briefings to the design that was put forward. I think I'm Lynette sorry? said we investigated the option for a cycleway along the middle of Herewood Road and responded to the board on that. And that was responded to from a safety perspective. Uh, in a technical perspective, we had options in the in the committee. Uh, guidance was to go out with a two-way option in the southern end of the route and one way up the middle in the shared path at the top end. Um, and then the, the, I guess the final question is this really seems to be an issue around delegations and so if the notice of motion 
um, doesn't go through or does go through, is there a separate process where we can reconsider the delegations? Like, how can we reconsider the delegations? That's not on the get... agenda for today. The only people that can amend this notice of motion are the mover and the second. So right, um, if we could just leave that matter for another occasion. I, I really well, want I us to get to the we debate. Should do that so and that I would we like to get this sort of advice on on the on the um, on the two the two issues that are before the council, so that people are very clear on what the what the debate is about. So, okay, but just so just in terms of one of the answers we had before is it will go back to the board for a briefing. I understand that. Is there anything even that's so? Is there anything that would preclude it going back to the board for a formal recommendation, even though that's not explicit in the delegations, that would effectively do what the notice of motion is asking. Unfortunately, the council is not the decision maker in relation to this matter. Um, in relation to the, the, the subject matter, it is the decision of the um, Urban Development and Transport Committee. So but as I say, I'm I want to take yeah. some of these things offline. I want to be able to come back and be very clear with councillors as to the nature of the debate and the decision and what flows from there. But I need to have, the, I needed to have this, all of the questions um, answered technically. Um, and now I need to sit down with legal and just be really clear about what happens next. So um, the, I don't think there are any more technical questions. I've got Sarah and questions. Sam. So just checking, um, just following on from Yanni's one. So the couple of other times we've reconsulted, one of those was Rapanui Shag Rock, where we went from Cashel Street to the Dog Leg. That got reconsulted. Um, and that, um, well, I didn't get a formal record, um, and um, Heathcote Expressway Ferry Road. Um, the community boards were briefed and gave guidance. The community board gave guidance for Linwood, Central Heathcote, or Hagley Ferry Meadows, it was at the time for Rapanui Shag Rock on the consultation. Um, it didn't need a formal recommendation, but there was really clear guidance, and you're happy to do that again. Staff just, have already answered that there is the potential for I'm going out for yeah, another. Yeah, excuse yeah. me, staff have already answered a question which said that it is possible that no, they could go out for that wasn't further my question. consultation. My question was over the community board involvement and in giving guidance and to do that. And that's what I already said is not a question for this um, matter right now. So. Just a really quick one, just yeah. so I'm really clear in my mind. So the the million dollars that's been spent to date, of the five hundred brought brought forward, you know, in that budget allocation resolution, how much of that has been spent? Are we are we talking about? Okay, so. Right. So okay. So we're we're not sure yet what's been spent to that five hundred. No, that's no, fine. Sorry. If, if, no, yep. no, I can't. Oh, no, sorry. It's, is there, um, okay, that, that, that's all the questions for staff? All right, no, that's fine. So it's um, almost 2 o'clock, so I'm going to adjourn the meeting till 2.15, and, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll debate the resolution. Thank you. <laughs>